Welcome to the introduction to the ECG PDA ECG course. I'm Jonas de Jong. I'm a cardiologist in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and founder of ECG PDA. Um, if you watch this presentation on YouTube, please uh, select uh, the highest resolution when possible because it will look a lot better. Um, and electrocardiography recording is uh, a registration of the electrical activity of the heart uh, and is a sum of the action potentials of 2 billion cardiomyocytes. Uh, resting cardiomyocytes have a negative polarity and during contraction the polarity changes and becomes positive. If you look at a single electro uh, a single cardiomyocyte, you can record the electrical activity within that single cardiomyocyte and you see the action uh, potential uh, of a single cardiomyocyte. This is a rabbit cardiomyocyte with a glass electrode recording the uh, electricity in a single cardiomyocyte. A graphical description of the membrane, cell membrane of a single cardiomyocyte. You see a, a sodium channel, a calcium channel and potassium channels. And I will start the animation and you'll see that the sodium channels open, sodium enters the cell, resulting in a positive change of the action potential during the uh, regularization phase. Calcium uh, enters the cell and potassium exits the cell. There are fast and slow potassium channels and uh, during the diastole uh, these channels are closed. And the cardiac conduction system um, delivers all this electricity uh, through the heart. It starts with the sinus node, which is the fastest physiological pacemaker in the heart. It's a group of cells in the roof of the right atrium uh, that have spontaneous uh, that shows spontaneous firing. This electricity goes through the atrium to the AV node and spreads uh, through the his bundle and the left and right bundle branch to the cardiac muscles. So how do you get from single cardiomyocyte uh, action potentials to the uh, QRS shape, QRS T wave shape on the ECG? Now there is a small uh, different on the surface EKG you can record um, electricity if there is uh, a flow of electricity. So during the action potential, during the activation of the ventricles, there is a small difference in the timing of the onset of the action potentials between endo and endocardial and epicardial layers, and especially between the apex of the heart and the basal parts of the heart. And this results in a, in a small time difference in the onset of activation of cardiac ventricle muscle and uh, differences in the uh, this onset results in a QRS shape on the surface EKG during uh, the repolarization phase there is no difference in the action potential uh, height between the, all these different cells so there is no electricity seen on the surface EKG and the, the ST segment is over the baseline and then uh, during the T wave there is again a difference between all these timings in the ventricles and you see a T wave on the surface EKG. Activation of the activation of the heart and you see that the activation starts in the sinus node, spreads through the atria and goes to the AV node which uh, uh, results in a sl small delay in cardiac electrical conduction then it actually jumps to the uh, apical septum on the left side um, and the septum is activated from the left to the right uh, also the apex is activated first before the apical parts of the heart are activated so if we uh, reduce uh, the speed now of this animation and you pretend that you are an EKG lead looking from the left leg towards the heart which is consistent with the lead 2 registration of the heart, 
uh, EKG, then you see the, as a first registration that there's atrial electrical activity coming towards you, resulting in a positive P wave on the surface EKG. The next step will be a, a small delay in the AV node, resulting in a PQ segment here. There it is. Then the electricity uh, jumps through the conduction system, to, through the His bundle and the left uh, bundle towards the left part of the septum. Then the septum is activated from the left to the right, resulting in a small Q wave in D2 um, as the electricity is going away from your point of view. Then the thick left heart muscle is activated, resulting in a high R wave. And then the basal parts of the heart are activated, resulting in a small S wave in Li 2. So P wave, small septal Q, large R wave, and a small S wave. But there are definitions of how you uh, name all these peaks and valleys of the QRS complex. Uh, the first positive deflection is the R wave. The first negative deflection is a Q wave. Um, the first, the, the, if the, the first negative deflection after the first R wave is an S wave, and if you have a secondary R wave, it's called R prime. And you have monophasic R complexes, you have QRS, complexes, RS complexes, and QS complexes. Uh, if you go from left to right through the ECG of one heartbeat, and you first encounter the P wave, which is the result of the atrial activation, as we've seen, the QRS complex, which is ventricular activation or depolarization, and the T wave, uh, which is the end of the repolarization. And the ECG records these activities from electrodes which are attached on different parts of the body. You have the right and left arm, the neutral electrodes on the right leg and the uh, foot electrode on the left leg. The chest leads are V1 to V6 V1 on the uh, right of the, s of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space, V2 on the left of the sternum, V4 in the midclavicular line in the fifth intercostal space, V3 is in between V2 and V4, V6 is in the mid axillary line horizontal from V4, and V5 is in between. And these leads, uh, you can imagine that these are cameras looking at a certain part of the heart. And uh, there are groups of leads looking at the same parts of the heart. So uh, you should imagine these leads as uh, belonging together. And like lead 1 and AVL are looking from the left to the heart. Left lead 2, 3 and AVF are the inferior leads looking from below to the inferior parts of the heart. V1 and V to V6 are the chest leads and they look in the horizon, horizontal plane, uh, especially to the left heart chamber. V1 and V2 uh, are closest to the septal parts of the left heart chamber. V3, V4 to the anterior parts of the left ventricle and V5, V6 to the lateral parts. Also, V1, V2 are close to the right ventricle, so any abnormalities in the right ventricle are most likely seen in V1 and V2, and also they are close to the atria. On a surface EKG, these leads are not printed in an, in a, in a the sequence is not in an anatomical relevant order, so you have to imagine uh, that these leads um, belong together. 1, AVL, V5, V6 are the lateral leads. 2, 3, 
AVF, the inferior leads, and the other are the anterior uh, leads. That's it for the basic introduction, and we will now continue uh, with the seven-step plan.